What's up guys, welcome back to Let's Play Basra 2 Heroes! Okay, Oichi is now going up against poor little Itsugi, so we haven't seen her in a little while. Not since early on in the Basra 1 Let's Play, as a matter of fact. Uh, but she's still she's still around, so this is kind of along the same lines of what Nobunaga did in the anime, which was have his followers go out and basically kill the outlying territory. So, um, for in the anime, we basically never get to see Itsugi except for one tiny little scene with her and uh, Mori Ranmaru, where they kind of become friends, and it's a it's a cute scene. But we have no idea who the character is, so it kind of falls flat. Anyway, so as far as some of the other characters go. We're led to believe that we see Nobunaga killing off um, Zavi and one, I think one other character, and we also see um, Shimatsu being defeated temporarily, I suppose. And death is, seems like a temporary thing in the as far as the Basara continuity is concerned, <laughs> uh, whether it be the games or the anime. A character can be defeated any number of times in the games and still come back, as we've seen with characters like Takata Shingen and tension up until Basra 4, you know, they're not playable in Basra 4 anymore, but for some reason they're still in the game somehow. And then as far as the anime goes, having characters like, you know, Hana Tadakatsu physically explode into a ball of fire and somehow be okay, or have uh, Motoshika get hit by the same kind of force that destroyed, that literally uh, destroyed the entire ocean around him, and yet he is fine. Like, he... His boat gets sank, he gets launched into the air, like, thoroughly defeated, gets back up and fights a couple days later, no big deal. Um, and that is just the over-the-top, you know, Dragon Ball-esque logic that Foster operates on, and it's lovely, really. Um, so yeah, this, basically what's happening here is Nobunaga has sent his, um, his disciples out to go do his dirty work and get rid of some of the outlying territories as he slowly conquers... The warring states. And this this obviously did not happen in history. Uh, Nobunaga never actually successfully conquered the entire country. He did have most of the center of it occupied, but he never managed to get the outlying territories until uh, he d inevitably died. And then we had, you know, after Akashi Mitsuhide assassinated him, and then we had. Um, Hideyoshi finished the job. Hideyoshi was the one that actually really unified the country. So, but anyway, so in this instance, we have Oichi going out to get rid of Itsugi in the upper corner in the mountains of the land of the rising sun. And joining us is Mori Ranmaru and Lady Nohime, um, Nobunaga's wife and his, uh, his closest, uh, like, not really his right-hand man, but his closest friend and, and ally, Mori Ranmaru. And, uh, so they will be helping us out quite a bit. This might be the only time we really get to see them in the rest of this Let's Play. Um, so we're gonna get to see, like, like Mori Ranmaru shoot his arrows, and we get to see one of his upgraded bows. I don't like playing as Mori Ranmaru, frankly. I could have done it in the first game, but I really don't like it. I really love playing as Lady Nohime, though. I, I, you, got, you guys got to see me play as her in the Basra 1 Let's Play, and if you haven't seen that, I highly recommend going and check it out. I really do like Lady Nohime, Nohime's gameplay. Um, so here's an interesting gimmick with these guys. These guys uh, are just random enemies that produce like this, this weird aura around them. And I guess it's meant to like slow us down, similar to like the zombie enemies we saw earlier. But uh, uh, it's not terribly effective on us. I think we're pretty much just immune to their charm, so not even really gonna pay attention to it, really. Yeah, Oichi is a pretty stark contrast compared to the other two characters that are joining us. But it does, uh, they never really send Oichi out on her own. We definitely seem to have either characters with us, but we really could have used these two jokers when we were going up against Takeda Shingen and Sanada Yukimura. That's when we needed the help. We don't need the help to take out Itsugi. She's weak. And she has a bunch of, like, Eskimos up here in the mountains, essentially. Like, they're, they are so unprepared to deal with this level of violence, so it's unfortunate. But I do like at least that they added the uh, these soldiers do have most of them at least have proper clothing. These guys don't seem to the guys with the the pink and orange coats, but the other guys they have you know full armor. Their feet are covered, and they have those um, 
winter shaw type things as opposed to well nothing and you know they would they would and they they will and did freeze to death if they were not wearing proper uh, footwear supposedly during um, for instance supposedly during the Korean War um, there were a lot of Chinese soldiers that participated and um, this was true during World War two as well where um, a lot of them died just from hypothermia because they did not have the adequate equipment to uh, to survive in those in those in those northern climates. So a lot of the uh, some of the Chinese soldiers got hypothermia and died uh, just by not having adequate footwear in uh, those those types of climates. So a bit of a tragedy, um, but it does happen, I suppose, when you are a you know. A nation sending your people to war without the proper um, equipment or training. But anyway, that's that's a whole nother rant for another time. So we're getting snowballed up here, literally, and <laughs> it's a little inconvenient, but I think we'll be okay. Um, Oichi is still wearing her secondary costume because it's going to keep her warm up here because obviously it's a, it's a full kimono, which probably isn't even all that warm, honestly. But it certainly is better than her other outfit where her thighs are showing. Look at Itsuki though, like Itsuki's arms and legs are showing and she's probably uh, um, she's probably freezing. So uh, Itsuki is ter in terms of a character, like I said, she, she only appears a little bit in the first season of the anime in one scene. She's fairly incidental. I don't like playing as her in the first game. I've never played as her in Boss for 2 or 2 Heroes. Um, she has really lame, funky attacks. She is rather creative for a Musou character and does use that mallow when she attacks. But another thing is that she, uh, her, she's not based off a real person necessarily. Itsuki uh, is more of a fairy tale myth, like a, a figure they would see in the uh, in the snow in the northern mountains of, of Japan. I believe is what the what the legend was, if I remember that correctly from the first let's play. Yeah, not a real person, just sort of a fairy tale. So as you can see on the side there, we have our combo chain got really high up there, which is pretty unusual for Oichi. Oichi normally doesn't get her combo chain that high, but we were using our Fury Drive Gauge, which has quickly lowered Itsuki's health. So, But we're not exactly Keiji, who basically can combo indefinitely. Um, we're going to finish her off with our boss attack. I'm using basically the same uh, secondary attacks as I was before. I'm going with a more optimal setup. Um, I don't think I may or may may have one or two more to show off before the end of the let's play, but we have we have one more mission to go after this, so I can show it off. All right, that wasn't too hard at all. More Ranmaru is definitely a great help as well. All these bodies, all this death. Why do we do this? Huh. Moiranmaru and Lady Nohime. Wouldn't it be a shame if we killed them? <laughs> ah, Alright. So it's time for a secret boss battle against Moiranmaru and Lady Nohime. So Oichi turned on them and is going to kill them. And of course she's a little bit underprepared for this fight, but we're going... We do have the element of surprise, and uh, Moira Armaro is weak, obviously, but we fought these guys quite a few times up until this point, so this is where it gets really good in Oichi's campaign. I love this twist, that now we've been just kind of following along with Nobunaga uh, reluctantly as he's used us essentially as a tool, and, uh, you know, we haven't really had the right to do what we want, We've been uh, secretly trying to figure out how we're going to get revenge for Azai Nagamasa's demise. And uh, eventually we just snap and we're just like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's kill them. Let's kill them all. Let's kill Nohime. Let's kill Moiranmaru. Let's be done with it. And that's actually not far off from what happens in the anime. Um, Lady Nohime actually does meet her demise at the hands of Oichi um, in the castle battle during the end of uh, season, Boss Rush Season 1. Uh, which was pretty awesome, in my opinion, to see. Uh, as much as I love no Nohime, to see um, Oishi get her revenge that way, using her finally tapping into her... That's the first time I really get to see her tap into her dark powers, and you see one of those phantom hands just devouring Nohime, and it was like the ultimate 
karma, which is also the thing that sort of insinuates that Oichi would be alive for season two, but she also gets like shot. So yeah, kind of hard to <laughs> kind of hard to tell uh, how what the outcome was there, but I suppose we found out in season two, now, didn't we? All right, Oichi, do your thing. We will have our revenge very soon. We're going to start doing what we want, fighting for what we care about. I love how she just looks over her shoulder at Nohime's body like that. Looks like there's no turning back now. The only thing left to do is kill him. Kill our own brother, Oda Nobunaga.